Welcome. So what I have here is y equals x squared minus 10x plus 24. And whoa, kind of getting a little shaky here. So remember what we're going to do by solving to complete the square. The first thing we're going to want to do is set our output value equal to 0. Because we're going to want to find the values of x that are going to make this equation true. And what we want to do is we want to go from standard form over to our vertex form. So to do that, we need to create a binomial squared. And to create a binomial squared, we have to create a perfect square trinomial. And to create a perfect square trinomial, we need to find the value of c that is going to complete the square. And what I mean by that is if I just isolate my first two terms, my quadratic and my linear term, I want to make this a perfect square trinomial. And to do that, i got to make sure that my a is equal to 1. So since my a is equal to 1, that's a good start. Now the next thing is I need to find the value c. inside. To, so I need to create a number. I'm going to add a number inside of this that's going to make a perfect square trinomial. And if you remember, a perfect square trinomial looks like this. Um, x squared plus the square root of sorry, 2 times the square root of c x plus c, where c was a square number. I remember our square numbers were you know, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, dot, 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 on and on. So I need to create a number. 24 is not a square number. So I'm going to create a square number that's going to um, be a part of this. Now remember, these are related times 2 times the square root of c. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this number. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to undo all this stuff. I'm going to, instead of being multiplied by 2, I'm now going to uh, be divided by 2. So I'm going to, instead of multiplying, I'm going to divide it. And then to take a square root, I'm going to square it. And that's going to create my perfect square trinomial. So in this case, I have negative 10 divided by 2 squared. Well, negative 10 divided by 2 is going to be a negative 5 squared equals positive 25. All right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add that 25 inside my parentheses. But since I'm adding it on the right side of the equation, I need to either add it on the left side of the equation, or I can simply just add and subtract it on the same side. And that's not going to affect uh, my solution. So 0 equals parentheses x squared minus 10x plus 25 minus 25 plus 24. And just real quick. A lot of students have trouble with it. If I say x equals 1, and then I say plus 2 minus 2, I didn't change that answer at all. Just by adding 2 and subtract 2, since I did it on the same side, my solution is still the true. x still equals that 1, because those plus, one and min plus 2 minus 2 still goes to 0. All right. So now I created my perfect square trinomial. Now what I need to do is factor this down. And we practice a lot of factoring perfect square trinomials. And remember, a perfect square trinomial is you need to make sure your c is a squared number. And you can use the diamond method if you want, um, or the x method, 25, negative 10. What two numbers multiply to give you 25, add to give you negative 10. And what we get is we get x minus 5 times x minus 5. And then um, negative 25 plus 24 is going to equal a negative 1. Now, the main important thing is, though, we don't have an equation that's written like this. We can rewrite this as squared. Just like if I said x times x, that equals x squared. Well, x minus 5 times x minus 5 equals x minus 5 squared. Now it's in this format. And when it's in this format, I can apply the square root method, which means I'm just going to use my inverse operations. So to solve for x. So the inverse operation of subtracting is going to be adding 1. Now, a lot of students get mixed up here because they want to add the 5 over there as well. But remember that 5 is inside parentheses. So by using my revert order of operations or reverse order of operations, I need to undo the squaring first. Now, remember, whenever you introduce the square root, we've got to make sure we do plus or minus. The square root of 1 is just going to be 1 equals x minus 5. And then I add 5. So my answer is x equals 5 plus or minus 1. Well, 5 plus 1 equals 6, and 5 minus 1 equals 4. So therefore, my two solutions are x is going to equal 6 and 4. Thanks.